Hello, fellow Tennessee conservatives. Paula here, filling in for Brandon this week. We would like you to help us fight big tech by going to our website, tennesseeconservativenews.com, and pressing that subscribe now button. That way you will get our free daily e-newsletter. And of course, follow us on all the free speech platforms such as Twitter, Gab, Getter, Truth, Parler, Rumble, and MeWe. So we're going to get right down to it. Here is a big one. New legislation seeks to censor news outlets and companies in Tennessee, such as the Tennessee Conservative. House Bill 183, sponsored by Representative Sam Whitson, and Senate Bill 160, sponsored by Senator Richard Briggs, seeks to redefine political action committees, such as clubs, corporations, associations, or other groups of persons that receive contributions or makes expenditures to support or oppose a measure or who support or oppose two or more candidates for public office during a calendar year. And the contributions or expenditures should not exceed $2,000. So of note, they're saying it's expenditures um, being made to support or oppose measures or political candidates. If groups or people are doing that, then they want that redefined as a PAC. But consider that any news outlet that prints articles that has language within that either directly supports or opposes a measure or candidates or simply publishes articles that has or have language that could be interpreted that way. Um, you know, all news agencies have operating costs. Most articles are not written for free, nor are they printed or distributed or published on any platform for free. Under this legislation's broad net, without exclusions made for such a company, these expenditures could qualify the news outlet as a political action committee. Consider the wide array of companies and corporations that whether the company itself or representative thereof makes contributions to political candidates, from small businesses to large corporations across the state, this legislation, if passed into law, would force them to register as PACs. Under current Tennessee law, all PACs are required to report every donation and expenditure to the state. Under the regulatory authority of the Tennessee Registry of Election Finance, when a PAC steps out of line, they have the power to fine that PAC up to $10,000 or close the organization. If this bill becomes law, news outlets and companies would be put in a difficult position. Further, many small businesses and grassroots news outlets do not have the staff or the skill set needed to regularly file exhaustive paperwork with the state. The legislation affects advocacy, advocacy groups in much the same way. The current law's definition of, of PAC excludes advocacy work and education many groups do as their primary focus. With the new definition, that exclusion goes away. In effect, the legislation seeks to eliminate all 501c4 advocacy organizations in Tennessee and re redefine them all as PACs. This is not good. This is really very chilling as far as free speech goes. This bad. You guys need to call your representatives, start making some noise about this one. We urge you to reach out to the bill sponsors and ask them to withdraw this legislation from consideration. That would be ideal. Next story. Lamberth withdraws bill for loosening illegal immigration standards for law enforcement. Okay, this is good. Representative William Lamberth has pulled his bill from consideration that would have removed the requirement for military service and allowed all permanent residents so that's non-citizens, otherwise known as foreign nationals, to apply and be considered for positions in any local law enforcement agency throughout the state of Tennessee. Lamberth said, this bill was filed as a part of my responsibilities as majority leader on behalf of the Commerce and Insurance Department. A friend of mine found this provision in the bill last week. Therefore, I personally withdrew the bill from consideration on the House floor. This provision will not be considered this year and hopefully will never be considered. It was inadvertently included in a much larger bill and it was never my intention to make this particular change. With House Bill 56 being pulled from consideration, there is one less potential magnet for illegal immigration into the state. 
Yet there have been no good bills filed to deter illegal immigration in this session of the General Assembly. Tuesday, January 31st is the deadline for all new bills to be filed. On Twitter, the Tennessee Conservatives are running a poll asking whether the General Assembly should take action at the state level to deter illegal immigration into the state. As it currently stands, 82.1% say yes. All right, guys, let me tell you about something that is not terrible. And I just got off the uh, the news line with this fighter of freedom, my friend, uh, Lori Cardoza Moore. And I'd like to encourage you to go to the Proclaiming Justice... Dip, dip, dip. Why don't they just bring Porky Pig out here? Maybe he could do a better job. I've been stumbling and fumbling over my words all day today. Too much talking, I suppose. Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, Taking Back America's Children Summit. Okay, guys? Now, this thing's coming up this coming weekend, but this is going to be on January 29th in Franklin, Tennessee. And you'll hear from the top voices in America today urging parents and concerned citizens to combat the falsehoods about Israel, Christianity, and U.S. history in public, I would call them government schools. You'll discover simple steps for engaging in the fight in your hometown and reclaiming your children's classrooms and kicking people off the school board that will not listen to parents. The summit will educate, motivate, and activate attendees to fight these falsehoods infiltrating the textbooks and curriculum of our classrooms. Join the battle to ensure our next generation of leaders is guided by facts, not left-leaning political agendas. You'll learn about strategies and languages used by left-leaning education reformers, the power of social media and vocalizing your concerns and ways to motivate other citizens to take action. It will be at the Williamson County Enrichment Center in Franklin, Tennessee, 730 to 530 on January 29th. Go to pjtn.org, pj, like PJs, pajamas, tn, like Tennessee.org, pjtn, and receive a gift of 10% off anything at the PJTN store. Go there today. You'll be in good company for a great organization. Don't delay. Get those tickets today. Okay, next up. Proposed legislation in this year's legislative session offers no relief for children, says a source that spoke confidentially with the Tennessee Conservative. With Tennessee children languishing in the state's care, proposed legislation seems to have only one goal, to focus on Commissioner Margie Quinn's promise of more for your money. Under Quinn's new administration, that means a lot more money. The budget has already reached a billion dollars a year, and her request for an additional $156 million is the largest budget expansion in a single year since its creation. Proposed legislation extends DCS past the sunset provisions at the end of December, and it has passed the Senate on its first consideration. Our source said, the Senate apparently feels no committee discussion is needed on this important legislation, perhaps because they don't want to hear from those who have been vocal about the abject failures of this agency under 12 years of a Republican administration. That's just, it's sad. It's, it's really sad. HB 203 and SB 37 also requires the agency to submit quarterly reports to the chairs of the government operations committees with updates on their progress in addressing the abysmal audit findings and requires DCS to appear before a joint evaluation committee no later than June 30th, 2023. Our source said the public and the children of Tennessee can likely anticipate that DCS will hire on taxpayer dollars an expert to flesh out a better way to cover up the misery of children taken into custody by Commissioner Quinn. As a historian of DCS, this is the way of the past and likely to continue. A Democrat-sponsored bill would compel the agency to reduce case levels to a maximum of 20 cases per case manager, necessitating an increase in hiring. Our source said, it is hard to imagine that the agency will be able to attract enough newcomers to help DCS meet this quota. And what if they don't? There is no remedy. The commissioner doesn't go to jail or get fined for her failure to comply. Another Democrat bill would institute a pilot program to extend the juvenile court's jurisdiction over juvenile offenders until the age of 25. This bill is a reflection of the staggering increase of a problem that Tennessee seems unable to, so to solve, Sorry, said our source. This bill does not suggest what should happen to these youth age 18 to 25, nor does it suggest what kind of services they would need. It is yet another empty promise that offers no real solution. Moving on. 
Patients' Rights Bill introduced in Tennessee for a second year in a row. Last year, despite the support of many Tennesseans, you guys may remember this, a patient's rights bill introduced by Representative Todd Warner died in committee. At the time, the Tennessee conservative covered the outrage of Tennesseans who showed up to support the bill in committee and were denied the opportunity to testify by former Representative Bob Ramsey, who was then the chair of the House Subcommittee on Health. However, the residents of Tennessee may actually get the opportunity to share their testimony this year, as Representative Warner has now introduced this legislation again as House Bill 377. The bill is generally meant to make sure patients' rights are properly acknowledged in healthcare facilities across the state. This legislation would ensure patients are allowed visitation by family members and advocates, especially in the case that the patient cannot make his or her own medical decisions. The language of this bill goes on to note that although certain rights may not be directly stated in the text, they do still exist. Representative Warner's drafting of the bill clarifies that this legislation is a response to the many Tennesseans who have been in the care of health care facilities or their surviving loved ones have expressed frustrations with the denial of the specific rights. It is worth noting that the House Subcommittee on Health, by whom HB 377 will be discussed, is now chaired by Representative David Hawk, as former Chair Representative Bob Ramsey did not win re-election in Tennessee's 20th District. All right, guys, I'll tell you what the story is. We're broke over here because conservatives, you know, here's the thing. I'll tell you this. There is a prevailing theme on this show, and that is that Republicans say one thing on the campaign trail and in public opinion and in front of conservative primary voters, and yet they do another. Well, here's another prevailing theme. Conservatives that claim to be conservative, that it is something that defines who they are, that if you ask them who they were, and if they listed the top five to ten characteristics, one of which would probably come up is their conservative values. Well, I'm here to tell you that if you look at your bank account, and if you look at your calendar over the last 90 days, and if there is not some kind of evidence that you support conservative causes with your time and or your money, those are probably not really your values. Time and money, that t tells you where you stand on things. So I would like to encourage you to put some time and some money where your mouth is if you haven't yet. And if you have, thank you. If it weren't for you, we wouldn't still be here. You are the thin red line that is propping up this show. I appreciate you very, very much. Please do help support our work and in our workers. Jason, Paula, Helen, our freelancers. Please, please, please help us here. You can mail us, as some people do, at the mailbag, Tennessee Conservative. 1523 East 27th Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37404. I'll give it to you again. 1523 East 27th Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37404. Or go to tennesseeconservativenews.com slash support, which is what most people do. I need to update that video on there. It's a little bit outdated. And if you give any amount, you'll get this proud Tennessee conservative bumper sticker. This Don't California My Tennessee bumper sticker which is met with about 95% goodwill and about 5% venom and hatred. And we do have, dum da 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 brand new, hot off the presses, updated directories of all of your legislative critters up there in Nashville. And if you get $50 or more, or if you give a recurring donation of $10 or more, we will send you this proud Tennessee conservative tumbler. It is made of stern, strong stuff. Stern Strong stuff. Uh, this thing actually uh, is made of, of one of the one of the uh, shells that came down uh, during the Civil War here in Chickamauga. I went out and mined every piece of this steel, refined it, uh, sent it to our manufacturers, and made these mugs out of it. Uh, it, it, it has a rebellious heart, rebellious heart, uh, deep inside the center of this tumbler. And you can put all of your favorite beverages in here and drink them and know that every, with every sip, with every sip, you're supporting conservative journalism in Tennessee. And should you wish to uh, drink uh, beer out of a can directly without pouring it into a glass like some sort of heathen, some knuckle-dragging heathen, you can put it uh, in this proud Tennessee conservative koozie as Brandon Lewis does. All right, guys, tennesseeconservativenews.com slash support. Thank you for those of you who give. Help us get to a 5% giving level. That does not seem much to ask, to have 5% of people pulling for the 95% that don't. So please help us jump on that 5% bandwagon. Okay, next up, new Tennessee legislation aims to clean up voter rolls. 
to new pieces of legislation being brought before the State General Assembly seek to confront and remedy an old problem, outdated voter rolls and their impact on voter integrity. The bills were introduced by State Senator Joey Hensley, who proposes new processes that will target and exclude those who have either died, moved out of state, or are not legally registered voters due to being non-citizens of the United States. Tennessee election integrity patriot Kathleen Harms said, these bills are a beginning, not an end to cleaning up voter rolls. One corrects a problem from last year. It changes the language from may to shall for checking a person's legal status to vote in the state. Harms' statement is a reference to the optional nature the current law affords to the state coordinator of elections when proceeding through the voter registration process. Currently, there is no obligation for the state coordinator of elections to check the systematic alien verification for entitlements to ensure the potential voter is legally entitled to vote in the United States based on their immigration status. Harms continued, the other deals with ensuring proper documentation and filing of data when reporting on removing dead voters from the voter rolls. This creates a process to ensure that things like dates of death are in the record. There are many aspects to voter rolls and their systems. These are only two. We need to do more with our vulnerable voter rolls that include those requesting an absentee ballot for civilians overseas, protecting our voter data from third parties, active or inactive voters, and expo exploitation of our systems, and so forth. We are moving on to our next story here. Okay, Tennessee Republicans continue to prioritize foreign labor over their own constituents. To many conservatives, it looks like Representative Dale Carr is actively working to make Tennessee more appealing to illegal immigrants by making it easier for employers to replace Tennessee workers with foreign labor. Representative Carr introduced House Bill 4 in November of 2022. He has since joined forces with freshman Democrat Representative Caleb Hemmer, who is now a co-sponsor for the bill. In the Senate, the legislation has been picked up by Republican Senator Frank Nicely under Senate Bill 151. As introduced, this legislation would allow state and local governmental entities to forego verification of a non-resident alien status, so long as the non-resident alien either holds a valid J-1 visa, a valid H-2B visa, or holds a valid visa for participation in an international culinary internship program. This would defeat the point of established verification measures like the Systematic Alien Verification for Entitlements Program or the Student and Exchange Visitor Information System. If this bill passes, Tennesseans would likely see a rise in cheap foreign labor, which would negatively impact opportunities and wages available to U.S. citizens. Currently, employers must undergo certain processes in order to employ foreign workers that hold J-1 or H-2B visas. However, this bill would allow employers across the state to hire foreign workers without verifying the legality of their status in some cases. Instead of providing more opportunities and promoting higher wages for the many U.S. citizens residing in Tennessee, this bill seeks to actively support the importation of foreign laborers who would take the place of state residents in the workforce. Tennessee has a large number of lower income earners who would be greatly impacted by this, as increases in foreign labor tend to specifically affect lower skilled U.S. citizen workers. This bill would seem to prioritize helping businesses import temporary foreign labor over and above the livelihoods of Tennesseans. Carr's bill will first be heard in the House Departments and Agencies Subcommittee. If you wish to contact them voicing your concerns about this legislation, their contact info is available in this article on our website. Okay, Tennessee lawmaker sends letter to school board to clarify laws regarding book removals. In a letter sent Wednesday to the Wilson County Board of Education, Representative Susan Lynn attempted to clarify Tennessee laws regarding book reviews and removals. Lynn read our article from January 23rd, 2023, that covered the board's actions regarding the perks of being a wallflower, a book that Wilson County parents say contains graphic depictions of sex acts, both heterosexual and homosexual, and suicide. Lynn is concerned that the county's book review committee, which has yet to recommend removal of any of the 12 books that have been sent to them for evaluation, is reviewing books that are in clear violation of Tennessee code. According to Lynn, these books should have been removed from the schools within the district by the board and not sent to the committee at all. 
I am compelled to inform you that possession of this book in school and making it available to minors is in violation of Tennessee Criminal Code. It is abundantly clear that this book being available to minors is a Class A misdemeanor in violation of the state's obscenity law. To further clarify, the Criminal Code trumps a review by a book com review committee and the school board. According to Lynn, Tennessee Code grants parents and school boards the ability to employ a more stringent examination of books that are available to students. And in the case of the perks of being a wallflower, there is no reason for the book to be evaluated by the book review committee because its sexually explicit content violates criminal law without question. I urge the Wilson County School Board to take immediate action to remove this book from Wilson County Schools, along with any other books which also clearly violate Tennessee law, said Lynn. Okay, well, that is it for the week, my fellow conservatives. So please support us by going to the website hitting that subscribe button and of course supporting us financially if you so wish. We really appreciate any and all donations. Um, as you can see, we are making a difference. We are getting the attention of legislators, uh, both in a good way and in a bad way. So we need you now more than ever. And I hope that you all have a wonderful weekend.